Hi there everybody out there in the singing world today. I have the pleasure of having Emily with us today, one of our Yay. most popular teachers at Vox Singing Academy. Extremely busy. Emily, you're teaching for us five days a week at St Kilda and Brunswick. And then the non. And Danny Nong, I can see the joy in travelling to Danny Nong there. It's a great studio, Danny Nong. Students Hi. are worth it. Hi everybody at the Danny Nong studio. We love you. Okay, let's kick it straight off. Tell us a little bit about your artistic self and, and, and a brief history and a rundown of your of your artistic self and your career because it's extensive. Uh, yeah, I was born on the very, in the very south of Russia in a musical family. Both of my mum and my dad are musicians. My younger siblings are as well. I grew up in a house with So you have great genes. Yes. Musical genes. <laughs> Music was everywhere. There was no, no escape. Very lucky. Um, in a house with two grand pianos in the same room. One grand piano, one upright. I was going to say you would have um, a very big house. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was alright. A little bit bigger than that one. I've been in band since I was 12, started with a pop band in a local community theatre and then the whole doom music scene happened. So I've done a lot of doom and black metal um, wow. in Moscow and a lot of folk, a lot of musical theatre, a lot of jazz, everything, literally wow. everything. I'm so curious, I like have all, all, all the music, I just want to do all of it. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'm acting surprised, but I knew this about you when I interviewed you for Box Singing Academy. Okay, so how long have you been in Australia for? Five and a half years. Excellent. Yeah, five and a half. Fantastic. And what have you been doing over here in Australia artistically, besides teaching for Vox Singing Academy to a very high level, and I appreciate that. And you're uh, a very valued <laughs> member of Vox Singing Academy, you're fantastic, Emily. Oh, uh, keep keep saying that. I might believe it one day. <laughs> you know that um, you know it's true. You bring a lot of, <clears throat> pardon me, a lot of different ideas, and and uh, you look at things from a different perspective, and I appreciate that. Thank you. It's nice to feel appreciated. Mm. Mm. And I appreciate you too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. I'll give you the money later. Uh, <laughs> pardon me. <laughs> okay, so um, music. I've been doing a lot of session work. Yep. As a session vocalist, one of the projects that people may know is um, a modern band called The Eternal. And fun fact, um, I met Mark and started working as, as a backing vocalist for The Eternal long before I moved to Melbourne. Wow! <laughs> we actually met through another project um, called Eon by Duncan Patterson, who is probably most known for being a bass player of Anathema for a while and then forming Antimatter. And with Duncan, Mark from The Eternal, and me, and a whole bunch of other awesome people, we recorded for Duncan. And here I've been working with musical theatre, voice production. I do a lot of voice productions, so which means I come to the studio for sessions and make people sound. Not just myself, but also other vocalists, because there are things, as you know, we can fix like straight away, immediately on this spot. That's what we are vocal and, mechanics. Yeah. Um, some things can be fixed straight away, but at, at first you need constant reminders, you need somebody in your face to uh, to make this happen, and then yep. you need to take it home and practice. Yep. Yeah, yep. and teaching teaching for Vox is like <laughs> the best thing that's happened to me, honestly. Wow! Uh, I, I enjoy it greatly, and I've been working with, um, uh, with a big theatrical production called Celtic Illusion yep. for over three years. Amazing, amazing experience. Unfortunately, my health doesn't allow me to sit for eight to ten hours on the bus any longer. Yep. <laughs> I had to say goodbye, but I'm looking forward to actually going and seeing the show finally because I have never seen it before. Uh, and now it's Vox. <laughs> Fantastic. Excellent. Have you got anything in the pipe works now that Celtic Illusion has come to a, to a close? What have you got? I know that you're doing some voiceover works and different things. I know that you're also mentioning about doing some of your own recordings as well too and getting back into mm -hmm. your own scene. Anything in the pipe works that you want Actually, to Actually, I'm just considering options right now because I have so many offers currently. Yep. As you should because you're an amazing <laughs> talent with an amazing voice. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking on it and the only thing is that is sad for me in Australia is that most of the music projects just want to do covers. Yep. So it's really hard to find people who want to do original music. Yep. 
uh, it's like 20% of what I've been um, exposed to so far. Yeah. So if there is a prog band out there that does a crazy mix of Dream Theater, Massive Attack and like folky celtic -y stuff, I'd be all up for it. <laughs> okay, so you're looking for things. Your favorite singer? Can't Ooh, think about it. Rachel Farrell. Rachel Farrell. Uh, look her up. Um, amazing, amazing jazz writer, composer, songwriter. Solo or is she doing band work? She has a band. Yep, but yes. it goes underneath her name. Sh sh yes, Rachel yes. Farrell. Look her up. There will be a link in the description, hopefully. I'll just go over and put it there. <laughs> and hopefully one of these days we can have maybe a, an interview. Maybe you can interview her. Oh, unlikely. She's singers. very big. She's very big. Oh, we do. <laughs> Don't, don't limit yourself, Emily. Okay, favorite song. Number one song, favorite song. Have to be Spindelsen by Kari Ruiz Laten. She's, I'm totally mispronouncing her name. Uh, there will be a lot of obscure references here. Um, we'll put them in the link so people can, yes. can, can look these um, up and, and, and uh, learn. Uh, she's, she's a Norwegian songwriter, vocalist. I have a huge mu muse of girl crush on her. She's amazing. Um, so check her out. She's fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> One album, your favourite album, can't be a best of, can't be a live album, that you would take on a deserted island. Uh, Kari's Spindelsen. Basically any of her albums really. She's... Okay. Yeah, it's just something that really resonates with, yep. with me, this type of music. Wow, so it moves you. Uh, yes, it's something that makes me feel things and that otherwise what, are impossible, you know? That's what I think, the, the best music, it invokes passion and feeling and it moves you. Yeah. You can just get some, some music and oh, it's, it's good but it doesn't move you. I think the best, the best music does that. Fantastic. Yeah, with I can go and have myself a nice sob fest and then I can have catharsis, emotional catharsis after that. She projects so much warmth and genuine humanity in her voice and music, you know. Fantastic. Check out the link below. Yes. Okay. Your favourite song that you enjoy singing the most? Uh, it brings you the most joy. Wow. Uh, it's, uh, it's an impossible question. How, no, like, whatever song I'm, I'm into, like, at the time, there is no one, there is so much music. Oh. Uh, so there's not one song that invokes yes. that you that you Let's, just got if one song that you say I, I want to sing this because I, I enjoy singing it. No. Let's no. put it that way. Whatever I'm working on, whenever I'm in the studio or uh, I'm working with a band, um, it's this one thing that takes all of my attention yep. and all of my emotion and you have to give it your all. Yep. And this is what is my favorite right now. Whatever I'm working on at the moment is my favorite. I very rarely listen to music for pleasure and or leisure. Music never plays on background yep. in my house. Yeah, never yeah, yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. I don't I go totally to, agree with you there. I don't go to jazz clubs to eat. You yep. know, those who do yep. fine. Uh, <laughs> I just sit there and go, oh, Talk, this is awesome. Talking about clubs. <laughs> and shows your most memorable show or performance that you've witnessed, live witnessed, uh, not on TV or DVD. Live. Seal in Moscow. Wow. Seal in Moscow. Fantastic. I think he was very sick. Uh, I think it's been a while since he's been touring, so obviously at this at some point you get very uh, so worn out. So this is obviously how many years ago? Ten years ago? <laughs> more, <laughs> more. I would say fifteen or something. So at like his that. peak. Yes, I love his voice so much. I love his music so much. He's such a brilliant melodist. This show was memorable in two ways. First of all, fun girling. He's awesome, amazing here singing live. And secondly, realizing that it's a human being with snot and rasp and coughing and apologizing and going, yeah, guys, I'm sorry, but I'll do, I'll do my best. And this is it's great what, when you say that. So you know, it clicks with you that yeah. you don't always have to be in your peak condition. Yeah. You have to just analyze where you are, yeah. 
figure out what you can do and go and make the best use of it. Yeah, I seen I seen Prince here in Melbourne and he was sick, and I also seen Robbie Williams fall on his backside basically, and he just ended up like leaning down like this, just <laughs> and, and he, he actually fell like, bang, and then he just kept on singing, and it's become very natural. And just he goes, I just fell on my, my backside, and he got back up, and it was yeah. yeah, that was that's what you've got to do. You got to still... improvise and just do do the best that you can. Yeah, this this video that everybody probably saw Beyonce with her hair being sucked ah, into yes. a fan. Yeah, yeah. But what do you do in this situation? You just you just let people deal with this and you keep doing your job. That's all there is. All right, now you have already covered this a little. Your favorite aspect about teaching singing at VSA? Um, two. I cannot go with just one. Okay. So one of well, them... Let me, let me go with this, because the next question is the most rewarding aspect about teaching singing. Okay, now we're talking. Is when you've been with a student for a while, especially with beginners, you know, when they don't know what's happening, they come into class, they are so shy and uh, frustrated, and they just go, ah, <laughs> instead of singing. So this moment when the person discovers their, their own singing voice, when it just comes out, like I'm just talking about it, like I'm, I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So these are the things that make it all worth for me. When somebody just hears themselves for the beautiful voice that they are yeah. and realizing that they don't need to be anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, yeah, and from specifically working with Vox, um, I like that we have a really tight team. I have rarely seen anything like that. Yep. Because most of the times what you will see is singing coaches online, working by themselves, promoting themselves. Here you have developed an amazing syllabus. And yeah, the first thing that I've done when you invited me to uh, interview, I, I went and booked a lesson with you just yep. to make sure that this is something that I'm interested in because yep. there are a lot of people out there that just teach like total bleep bleep, this bleep, out. bleep. <laughs> total bleep, bleep. yes uh, and this makes sense to me there are some aspects of it that I'm just uh, was struggling you remember how I was struggling with cries Christ. it took me like three months to figure this out yeah. and then I went and listened to my old recordings and I heard it there like recordings that I've done 10 years ago and I heard this cry yep. right there so I was doing it yep. um, and then it fell into place. Yep. <laughs> yep. Fantastic! So now, now the, 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 the best thing about teaching is that you can teach people to systematically replicate the best performance. Yep. Not yep. just do 10 takes in the studio and go, oh, this one is awesome! But I have no idea why, and I don't know, live it might be different, yep. no. You make an awesome take in the studio, and then you go into it live consistently. And practice it, and practice yes. it, and practice it at home. Yes. Practice, practice, practice. Fantastic. As I've already said, you're, you're an integral part of Vox Singing Academy. Not only are you a teacher, you also have, you, you come up with some great ideas. We're going to be starting a podcast shortly. Yay. Uh, you, do, you do SEO, you do blogging, you proofread uh, my um, awful uh, blogs and so they come out beautifully because Emily comes and does all of the great work on it. So yeah, you're you're terrible. you're not just a great <laughs> teacher. We utilize all of your other fantastic skills uh, that you bring to the table as well. So, and that's with everyone at Boxing Academy. Everyone that's working at Boxing Academy isn't just teaching. They're all they we've all got an integral part in making Boxing Academy what it is. So I want to thank you very much for that. I think we've covered the, the formal part of this interview, so we're going to get into some more fun aspects of this oh. interview. So, yes, you can relax, relax. <laughs> Emily, your favourite coffee. Your favorite food, your favourite food or meal? Coffee. Coffee? Coffee, yes. If there is anything, uh, or oh, I love coffee so much, all of it. I'm not a snob. I don't know what it is. It's just... Food. Yes. Food. Mm, nah. I don't care about food. Wow. I, I wanted to, I, I was expecting you to say they've got that Russian cheese with what? with sultanas in it. That's like a dessert. You know that, that sweet Russian cheese? What, what? is that called? Uh, it's like cottage cheese, yes. basically. Yes, with, it's beautiful. With, with a bunch of sugar in there. Yes, and I had it at that Area 47 where all the KGB, you know, the restaurant. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? 
When in I Moscow. Have never, I've never, I've never been. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't go to restaurants. Okay. I'm ambivalent about food, you guys. It's sustenance. I like. Okay. If I have kale in my face, I'll be happy. Just borscht, fine. I don't care. Bosch is a is 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 a for those of you that Everybody don't. Everybody knows that. <laughs> but why not? No, it's 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 a it's a soup. It's a it's beetroot a, soup. It's a Russian soup with beetroot and cabbage yes. and lots of meat. Or if you're a vegetarian, there are veggie varieties yes. and so on. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't know. Food is food. Good. Like, Favorite color? Uh, orange, like burnt orange, autumnal colors. Wow. This greenish, like mute, muted colors, yeah. Okay. Your favorite personal item: memorabilia, clothing, jewelry, car, he health. I've written healthy. That's that's my most personal. That's my most valued personal item. Yours. Knitting. Knitting. Yes, all of my yarns, all of my yeah. So it's it's out of frame, guys, but it's right yeah, there. Some knitting needles. It's there. right there. There is a new project that I start just started. There's like it's gonna be a beanie and uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, knitting. I can't live without it. This is like it's hard I've, to. S I've been wearing my hat. It's been getting cool. I've been wearing my hat. <laughs> And also, also the the, the uh, my friend that you um, needed the the black hat for as well too has been been wearing that as well Yay, too. Cold, awesome. Colder, colder weather here that we're getting. Okay, an application, beep, and an appliance or a gadget you just can't live without. It has to be the phone. Yep. But I'm not attached to like one specific phone. It's a tool. Everything's backed up. Yep. And I've had this little monster. It's Samsung. Galaxy Note 3. I've go. had it for, for over five years. It's basically a brick and an artifact, but it's still working. Until it dies, I'll be using it. Yeah. Your star sign, Emily? Uh, no clue. I don't know. <laughs> so that eliminates the next question. So do you believe in star signs? So we're just going to go straight to the next question here. Yeah, let's go straight to the next one. <laughs> Your idol. Do you have an idol? Um, Someone that you admire, that you look up to, that's inspired you? Again, it's going to sound so cheesy, but my students, the ones that work the hardest, yep. and in general people who apply themselves and try to better themselves, it's, I don't have a single favorite human, well, my favorite human being is obviously my husband. Yep. Um, yourself, firstly. Um, you got to respect yourself and... So yourself first, and then secondly, secondly, hubby, and then your students. Excellent. Okay, thank you for sorting out my life. <laughs> Once I'm interested in that, I will let you know. Yes, if you had a dinner party and you could invite invite any two famous people, who would they be? They can be dead or alive. Oh, that's a hard one. I would probably invite Whitney Houston and Robin Williams. Excellent. Um, Briefly, why? Because they have given us so much joy and they have given us so much and yet they were so tortured and they've had so many problems, emotional and stuff. So I would just like to have, I don't know, knit along with Whitney and just have a nice family time with people who probably were not getting much of it and just listen to them just whatever they have to say you know I would like to talk to them especially Robin Williams and get him to make me laugh because I'm sure he'd make anyone laugh but then I'd also like to go deeper into their uh, into their psychology and maybe their personal life about what led them down to that because they both did a dr uh, abuse drugs and alcohol but we know your favourite too. So I, we'll, so I, I wouldn't ask any questions. I would just let them do whatever they want. I would like to do that <laughs> to, to learn from from them. Because I think, especially, I think Robin Williams was always concerned about making other people happy and not too much himself. Anyway, let's move on from that. Yeah. Your celebrity crush and you have to have one. Oh, of course I have one, and you probably have one. Yeah, we've already, already mentioned it, haven't we? No, no, we have not mentioned this one. Uh, okay. Brian Cox, uh, he's a physicist, and yes. 
Excellent. Yes, my celebrity crush is Brian Cox. Wow. Look him up. A physicist. He's, he's also a musician, he used to be in a band. Wow. Um, you probably have heard this song. Things will only get better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he he was playing, I think, keyboards in this band. Wow. Um, yeah, he's hilarious. He um, he's on multiple podcasts and he works with the BBC and he popularizes science and he works in CERN with Large Hadron Collider and does a lot of theoretical and practical research into how universe works. So this always fascinates me and. I am not ready to dedicate my life to this, but as um, as a lay person, I'm always happy to find out more. If somebody has the skill to communicate such complicated matters in in an in an easily accessible, fun way, so I highly recommend you seek him out. <laughs> I will, Brian Cox. I'm gonna yes. look him up. Oh, I'm gonna send you so many links. <laughs> Your favorite leisure activity or hobby besides singing and knitting? Oh, come on! <laughs> come on! That was not. Oh, okay. So you don't have that. You can say. You can say. I have one. Swimming. With your cats. Oh yes. Swimming. Yeah, cats. Cats. Cats are our thing. Yeah. I like swimming. Um, I don't do it very well, but <coughs> I go to the swimming pool. Yep. And I know all. Well, how how to execute four basic swimming styles correctly? Yes, what are they? So, uh, it's breaststroke. Mm -hmm. It's breaststroke. Yes. Yep. Um, Free. Uh, then Free it's style. the freestyle. Yeah, yep. not exactly like this. What you're showing is like a doggy paddle. Yes. It's not exactly. So the stroke is slightly different. Right, yeah. um, then it's the butterfly. Butterfly. No, oh. Butterfly yep. is the hardest one. Oh. And the and the backstroke. Yep, excellent. I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm sure you're not. I'm sure you're all better than I. I, I keep afloat. <laughs> That's amazing. Do you have a personal motto that you live by, and if so, what is it? Mm. That's a hard one. That's a really hard one. Maybe just be better than yourself yesterday. That's a great one. Always try to constantly improve. Yes, I'm a perfectionist. Yeah, I want everything to be super awesome and as the, to the best of its possible level. But it's unrealistic. Perfection yeah. is unachievable. So all we can do yeah. is just doing a little bit better than yesterday. Just yeah. doing a little bit better than yesterday. Yeah. I was reading uh, the Aerosmith autobiography and Steve Tyler said that if he was in the recording studio and wanted to make everything perfect, he'd still be in the recording studio today. Yeah. He was that type of person, and he just said, oh, "Look, I just I had to be basically pried out of the recording studio because otherwise, I'd be always making changes and, and trying to make things better." Okay, your fondest or best life memory? Mm, in Arhan Besides being born. Yes, in Arhan um, I don't remember how I was born. There's a whole another story. <laughs> In Arhangelsk, um, the very, very up north in Russia, the coldest place that I've ever lived, uh, I've met some of the best people that I've met in my entire life. People from Arhangelsk, all my friends, I love you dearly. Everyone. And we spent so much time by the sea. Just Eskimos, do you guys have Eskimos? Not, not, I know not you're not, there, a, not, I know you're not allowed in America, you're not allowed to call them Eskimos anymore. There's another official Inuit. Inuit. Inuit, yes. Yeah. Politically correct saying of it is Inuit. I'm probably mispronouncing it. Yeah, there are over five hundred nationalities and languages in Russia. You can't cover everything. Yeah, and just spending we had a tradition with um, with friends just driving to the sea. Um, and spending days there by wow. with, a, with a fire, very similar to what is right there on on, on the photograph yep. out there. Yep. Yeah, cold, white sea. So this is the people. northern part of Russia. Yes. yes. So this is what I always. So you, did you do that in summer? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Summer summers there are very short, but they are very intense. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Excellent, fantastic. Water, I love water. Everything by the sea is my favorite memory, but most important there is usually I'm sure nature that, and people. I'm sure, yeah. well, I'm going to find out what your star sign is, and I'm sure that you're probably a water sign with what you've been saying here. I'm into star signs. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to find out what it is. Okay, 
your biggest life-changing moment besides being born mm -hmm. or meeting your husband? Mm -hmm. Well, meeting my husband was not a life-changing moment. It oh. was a moment when it was a different story. <laughs> well, your biggest, He's not a musician. Your biggest life-changing uh, moment. The biggest life-changing moment is when I first went abroad um, into a different country. Uh, it was when I first went to Poland with my boyfriend. Poland? Poland, yep. yeah, with my boyfriend at the time. We went to a music festival with a whole bunch of other people. There was a group of Goths in, in Russia, in Moscow, that we were going together with. And just being exposed to a different culture. Yes, it's a Slavic country, but the cult culturally people are slightly different. There's a different language. You know, something just clicked in my head and I started traveling a lot after that. Um, and it's still the most favorite thing for me, it's just to go somewhere I've never been before and just wander around, just get getting lost. Um, yes, so first travel abroad, uh, abroad, mispronouncing things. Beautiful place, <laughs> Poland. I'm half Polish. It's <laughs> And really, really beautiful people. I think there are... There are a few countries out there where the people actually make the country. I think Poland is one of them. Yeah. Scotland, Ireland, I think as well too. Been to Ireland, amazing. Where, where the people really make the... Yet yeah, the countries, all these other countries are great, but the people who take those countries to the next level. Okay, fantastic. Your most embarrassing moment. Oh, I'm not sure we can put it out there. Can is we it? Can we have a second most embarrassing moment? Um. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Second most embarrassing is when uh, we went to China with Celtic Illusion to Hong Kong quite recently. I'm in very sparkly, very fitted gowns, yep. um, and I went a Did little bit. Did you have a wardrobe malfunction anyway? Yes, I went a bit overboard with dumplings. Okay, and your favorite travel destination? Anywhere I've not been before. Excellent. Same with. <laughs> Same with me. Your favourite sport to watch if you watch sport? Uh, I don't, but I will watch gladly anything that uh, that is non-competitive. Yep. Something that is artistic. So, artistic sports. I don't know, are there any? No. Well, oh, maybe. jump, you know, like the synchronized swimming, yes. It's still competitive it's though. Well, if you take each number out of context, if you just watch synchronized swimming, it's beautiful. It is, but it's still a competition though. All right. Do you, and this is, I've already known the answer, do you support a team or a club? Is there a, nah. no? Okay, all right. My favorite sport is curling on the couch with a book. <laughs> Your opinion about the state of the world in a minute. Uh, Do not mention politics or religion. Things can only get better. Yes. Things yep. Can only get better. Uh, it's 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 always shaky. You know, we are humans. We we are tribal. We want to belong to one group of people. We want to identify. Like we don't want to identify as nerds or as musicians yep. or as um, a religious group or a political party. Uh, all in all, all we want is just to be happy and yep. get along yep. and as long as everybody does that, I reckon the world is getting better. Very good. So do I. <laughs> One thing that would make the world a better place, because uh, we are very overpopulated. If we keep breeding the way we are, there's going to be some big trouble. But anyway, no, that's um, my opinion. One okay. thing that you would didn't make... even want ask mine. Okay. No, I am asking yours. Um. Okay, so I'm a very task oriented person. I'm looking for solutions, and the best solution that worked for me personally, that taught me to accept other people for what they are, is traveling and learning other languages and watching films and listening to music from different cultures and. Um, Architecture. So yeah, just being, ex just expanding learning. your horizons. Just learning. Yeah. Learning is one thing that will make everything better. Yeah. 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 Whatever your subject of interest in, just, just, just learn. Yeah. Get, get with open mind in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a charity, charity or an organization 
or something that is close to your heart that you would like to mention? Yes, Forever uh, Friends Animal Rescue is the foundation that saves uh, cats, dogs, and horses and pigs and goats and basically everything. all everything from death row. So awesome volunteers just go and take animals out of pounds on whom uh, everyone else gave up. And rehome them. And re rehabilitate them and rehome them. Right now I have two cats. I foster two cats. One of them is a feral. She's great organization. Yeah. Uh, so we will put the link down below. Go check them out. And if you want a pet, Adopt one! Yes, yes, don't go and buy... <laughs> Adopt one! There are so many beautiful, yes, loving creatures yes. out there. Hit me up if you want an awesome kitty. <laughs> yes. Alright, we're going to wrap it up. Anything else you'd like to share with the viewers before we wrap it up? Um, not really. I think that was a good conversation. Thank you <laughs> it was. for inviting me. That's okay, no problems. Yeah. Thank you for having us, Emily. And if you want lessons with Emily, please give us a ring and Emily will be more than happy to accommodate you online. You're also doing online lessons yes. as well too. Skype yes. anywhere in the world, anytime, or here in beautiful, lovely Melbourne, Australia. Signing Ooh. up. Bye-bye. Thanks, thanks for coming along, Emily. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>